In today's lecture, we will see fixed length subnet masking, which is well known as FLSM. As usual, we will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number one, we will understand FLSM. And outcome number two, we will know about VLSM. Let's see what is FLSM and VLSM first. FLSM means it's fixed length subnet masking. And VLSM stands for Variable Length Subnet Masking. If I say simply FLSM and VLSM, I know it's quite difficult for you to understand at this stage. So before going into this, let's take a scenario. Firstly, let's see how many networks are there in the given scenario. Just pause this video for a while and find out how many networks are there in the scenario. I hope you are done. If your answer is there are three networks in the scenario, it's a wrong answer. Let me explain you why it is a wrong answer now. In this scenario, we have a total of six networks. Let's see what are these six networks. This is network number one where we can have a local area network which is connected to this router this side. This is obviously network number two and this is network number three. And if your answer is three, you are right up to this stage. But still we have three more networks in this scenario. This is network number 4, network number 5 and network number 6. If you wonder why these three are also on network, I'll tell you the reason. We can use a different IP scheme here, different IP scheme here, here, everywhere. But when we assign an IP address to this interface, so this interface must somehow contact this interface. Because if this router or any device in this network wants to send some data to any device in this network, it has to obviously send the data either this way or this way. So obviously this interface must communicate with this interface and likewise this interface must communicate with this interface. When this interface or this interface is assigned an IP address, obviously the opposite side should also be assigned with the IP address that is falling in its own network. Say for example, if this is 10.10.10.1, and obviously, it should be in the same network, preferably, it should be 10.10.10.2. Only then, the packet which is sent through this interface will reach this interface. They must be in the same network, otherwise communication will not happen. So obviously, these two IP addresses should be in one network, these two IP addresses should be in one network, and these two IP addresses should be in one network. A total of six networks are there in the scenario. I hope you are clear with this. So to understand things better, let's take few hosts in each network. Say, network 1 has 20 hosts, network 2 has 10 hosts and network 3 has 6 hosts. So obviously 20 IP addresses are definitely required for network 1, 10 IP addresses are required for network 2 and 6 IP addresses are obviously required for network number 3 and 2 IP addresses are required for network number 4, 5 and 6 each. Why? Because for network number 4, we need to assign one IP address here and the other IP address here. So for network number 5 also, we need two IP addresses, one for this and one for this. And obviously for network number 6 also, we need to assign one IP address here as well as here. So we have a total of six networks wherein each network has its own set of requirements. So network 1 is obviously needs 20 hosts or 20 IP addresses. To understand things better, I will just move the scenario a little bit towards the left. Now, we will focus on assigning the IP addresses to the network. If we are in the classful world, our requirement is we need 6 networks, wherein in each network it differs. Network 1 requires only 20 hosts, whereas network 2 and 3 requires 10 and 6 hosts respectively. So obviously, 6 networks are needed for catering this situation or catering this scenario. Let's take one example class C network which is 216.21.5.0. Why I am preferring class C here is our requirement is maximum 20 hosts only. So if we go for class A, we will get less number of network wherein in each network we can have enormous hosts. Obviously, it's going to waste the IP addresses. So class B is also not suitable for our case and we are left only with class C because we are dealing with class full addressing. So if we go for class C, we can have a maximum of 256 IP addresses wherein the first IP address and the last IP address are not used for the host because they are the network and the broadcast address respectively. So we have 254 IP addresses which can cater 254 hosts per network. 
but here our requirement is just 20. Let's take an example IP address 216.21.5.0 to 216.21.5.255. So this is one network in class C with this subnet mask, which is the default subnet mask of class C is 255.255.255.0 or in slash notation it's slash 24. Let's assume we are giving this entire range of IP addresses to network 1. The second set of range that is 6.0 to 6.255 to network number 2. So 7.0 to 7.255 to network number 3. And 8.0 to 8.255, 9.0 to 9.255 and 10.0 to 10.255 to the networks 4, 5 and 6 respectively. If we keenly analyze, network 1 has 20 hosts, so obviously 20 IP addresses are sufficient for network 1. But we are giving 254 IP addresses to this network. So we are going to waste obviously 234 IP addresses. The worst case is when we start allotting the IP address to networks 4, 5 and 6. Though we have a maximum of 256 IP addresses and 254 usable IP addresses, we are going to use only two IP addresses for this network, right? One is for this side and the other one is for this side. So out of 254 IP addresses, we are going to use only two IP addresses. So obviously we are going to waste 252 IP addresses which is considered to be a big wastage. And that is why we are going towards the classless world. So let's see how this same scenario can be handled in the classless world. So one thing we need to note here is the subnet mask which is 255.255.255.0 or slash 24 is fixed throughout this network, right? So this is fixed length subnet masking. We will see one more example for fixed length subnet masking. That too in classless world. In the classless world, we have subnetted this IP address that is, in the previous example, we know it's 216.21.5.0 is the starting of the IP address. So we have taken this and we have subnetted for handling this situation. This situation, we need 20 hosts maximum for this network. So obviously we can't have exactly 20 IP addresses because the subnetting will be giving the output in the powers of 2. 2 power 5 is 32, 2 power 4 is 16. So we can't assign 16 IP addresses because we need to assign IP addresses for 20 hosts. So 2 power 4 is not possible and that's why we are going for the next range which is 2 power 5. So 20 is nearer to 32. So in every subnet we can get 32 IP addresses where the first IP address of each subnet cannot be used for the host as well as the last IP address. So we can use 30 IP addresses for each network. So if you observe here, 30 IP addresses we can use here, but our requirement is just 20 and we are going to waste just 10 IP addresses. When you compare this scenario with the classful addressing, in classful addressing we wasted a lot of IP addresses, but here the wastage is minimal. And that's why in one of the previous lectures I told you, that classless addressing means it doesn't mean that it will not waste IP addresses. But the wastage of IP addresses in classless world is minimal when compared to the wastage of IP addresses in the classful world. And again here, for all these subnets, we are going to use the fixed subnet mask which is 255.255.255.224 or slash 27. Let's say this is going to be assigned to this network 1. So the second subnet is to network 2. The third subnet is for network 3. 4, 5 and 6th subnet are for the networks 4, 5 and 6 respectively. So in all the cases, the subnet mask is a fixed length subnet mask. So this is FLSM, that is fixed length subnet masking. In this scenario also, just for two IP addresses, we are getting 32 IP addresses, right? So we are going to waste 30 IP addresses in networks 4, 5 and 6. Similarly, just for 10 hosts or 10 IP addresses, we are getting 32 IP addresses in second subnet. Just for 6 hosts in network number 3, we are going to take the third subnet wherein we are going to get 32 IP addresses and our requirement is just 6. So 32 minus 6 is 26 and 2 IP addresses that is the first and last are not used. So obviously 24 IP addresses we are going to waste in network number 3. So when we go with the fixed length subnet masking, the wastage is still there. Can we handle this effectively? Yes, it can be handled effectively to some extent. Instead of going for FLSM which is fixed length subnet masking, we will migrate towards VLSM which is variable length subnet masking. 
If the requirement is 20, we will use the same network ranges, but in each network the subnet mask is going to vary. Maybe the subnet mask what we are going to use here may not be the same subnet mask for this network as well as for this network. And this is the concept of variable length subnet masking. We will understand about VLSM in the next lecture when we see an example. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood what is FLSM and we know why do we need VLSM. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture and thank you for watching.